Okay, we're going to talk uh, briefly about gas pressures because um, gas pressures are very important to understanding the dynamics of how oxygen and carbon dioxide move into and out of the bloodstream. And clinically they're important because you're going to have to know some terms that are used frequently in, in clinical um, situations. Um, when you're interpreting um, arterial blood gases and things like that because you hear terms like the um, fractional the fraction of inspired oxygen and the fraction of inspired um, CO2 and you hear terms like the partial pressure okay so we're going to talk about those what those terms mean uh, in a conceptual way. So here we have, if you imagine that all the space all the space out here, you know, we took a uh, we gathered a container full of atmospheric gases down at sea level and then we took it took it into the ap um, the uh, into outer space where there is a vacuum where there is you know zero pressure. And then we measured the pressure that was pushing up on a piston and measured on a gauge and as is typical at sea level you know the average um, barometric pressure at sea level is 760 millimeters of mercury now what is that made up of well or what causes that well remember all of these gases are bouncing around and moving back and forth and randomly um, moving in different directions and on average they are pushing up against this piston because of their random motion some of them are going down some of them are going up but enough of them at any given moment in time are going are pushing are bouncing up off of this piston and those um, bouncing molecules are enough to cause a to raise this gauge up to 760 millimeters of mercury where it stays constant so that pressure is caused by the random thermal motion of all the molecules. Now each of the molecules here, and remember the molecules in our atmosphere are primarily nitrogen. Our atmosphere is approximately 76 percent nitrogen and if you counted up all those dots there are 76 little orange dots that stand for the nitrogen. Um, they, it is around 20% oxygen, and I'm saying around because this actually varies by depending on how much moisture vapor we have in the air. Um, then it is, you know, it has about 3% water vapor, and again, in a desert, it's going to be less. Um, in a rainforest it's going to be more and then it is about 0 0.04 percent carbon dioxide okay so um, when we are talking about the fraction of gases in um, in air, we are just talking about the percentage of particles that are made up by that gas. So the fraction of nitrogen in air is 76 percent. So if you are breathing in air, just plain atmospheric air at sea level, your fraction of inspired oxygen is going to be 20 percent. And no one ever really talks about it, but your fraction of inspired nitrogen is going to be 76 percent. And your fraction of inspired carbon dioxide is going to be 0.04 percent. Now obviously if you put some on a nasal cannula you're going to increase their um, intake of oxygen by a couple of percentage points from 19 to 21 20 percent to 21 to 22 percent and every liter of oxygen is going to increase it by another um, two percent or so. And if you had someone on a 50% non-rebreather, then their fraction of inspired oxygen is going to be 50% or around 50%. It's not precise. Um, okay, so that that is the fraction of inspired oxygen. It's just the percentage of particles that are making up the gas that you are breathing in. 
and again it's just the number of particles that it's based on the number of molecules now the partial pressure is so we have a pressure here of 760 millimeters of mercury so that is our total pressure so I'm gonna call that P total okay now I'm gonna give you this is based on what's called Dalton's law for those of you who like to know and you don't need to memorize that but that's this is Dalton's law um, the pressure the total pressure is equal to the partial pressure of nitrogen so pressure nitrogen plus the partial pressure of oxygen plus the partial pressure of water vapor and then plus the partial pressure of carbon dioxide okay so each and it's very this is very linear it's a very simple formula to to understand because if okay so to give an example of how this worked if I um, could somehow remove all the particles in here except for nitrogen I would have a pressure of about 597 millimeters of mercury and then um, if I were to remove everything but the oxygen I would have a pressure of 159 or so millimeters of mercury and then same thing with the water vapor um, it would come to about three millimeters mercury well, it would be like three to seven and then you know carbon dioxide would be another three millimeters of mercury now if you add these all up um, actually the, I believe this comes to 763 but again the you know the pressure is going to vary um, by a few points either way um, even in our own atmosphere so anyways that's basically how it's how it is made up so the partial pressure of oxygen is around 159 millimeters of mercury in the atmosphere okay so okay so um, and this is again um, I, w I wanted to talk about this form here we were just talking about atmospheric air and again the um, total pressure is around 760 millimeters of mercury and if you add up all these partial pressures that's how you come up with the 760 so again about 597 of nitrogen 159 of oxygen a little bit from carbon dioxide and a little bit from water vapor and these are the fractions right here 78 percent 19.7.04 and 5 percent now interestingly when we breathe in the gases get mixed in our alveoli because um, we are um, you know the alveoli is really a space where gases diffusing into and out of our blood and gases coming in uh, through our airway are getting mixed so the partial pressures and the fractions within our alveoli look a little bit different so because we are um, a lot of our oxygen is dissolving into the bloodstream um, the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli are lower and because a lot of the carbon dioxide is diffusing out of, out of our bloodstream into the alveoli it is quite a bit higher in the alveolus so the partial pressure of oxygen drops from 159 to about a hundred actually to be real precise I think the what's considered average is about 106 but 100 to 106 would be normal um, and then carbon dioxide is you know really going to be about 35 to 45 and then the water vapor is quite a bit higher as well in the humid environment within our lungs now I wanted to make a point here if you increase the fraction of inspired oxygen that we are breathing in 
then theoretically where you're going to be inhaling 100% oxygen. So the, the gases right around our oropharynx and nasopharynx um, are, is going to be completely comprised of oxygen, so it's going to have a partial pressure of about 760. When it gets into the alveoli, it's probably going to drop to around 4 or 500, but it was, will still be very, very high. And there will be very little nitrogen within, um, within our alveolus. Okay, so I'm going to make a little alveoli here, and we're going to talk about what happens now. So we are we have a little alveolus here. In our in our alveolus, we have you know about a partial pressure of about 106 millimeters of mercury of oxygen, and a partial pressure of carbon dioxide of around. 40 millimeters of mercury. Now, in order for the gas to work its th way through this thin alveolar membrane, it needs to, they, the gas particles need to dissolve first and then they need to diffuse. Okay, so we have a little alveolar membrane here with some red blood cells floating by. And so there are no carriers or protein particles or anything. All the gases in our respiratory tract move, work their way into our bloodstream by first dissolving in, um, in liquid and then diffusing across the membrane. And it's simple diffusion. So it needs to diffuse down a concentration gradient. Okay. So dissolving and then diffusing down a concentration gradient. So the concentration grad gradient has to be higher here. The concentration has to be higher here than it is higher here than it is in here. So interestingly enough, carbon dioxide is very, very soluble in water. It dissolves about five times faster than oxygen. And this is really important because um, because it dissolves so much more readily, um, it actually diffuses much quicker as well uh, through the alveolar membrane because remember the first step is it needs to dissolve before it can even diffuse. So as a result the concentration of there's is does not need to be a real high concentration gradient for carbon dioxide. The concentra concentration gradient of carbon dioxide is nearly undetectable. So the carbon dioxide may drop to 39.9 millimeters of mercury in the bloodstream. Remember, um, the normal concentration, the normal partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the bloodstream is 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. And those of you who have worked with arterial blood gases before, you'll recognize this value because this is the normal value of carbon dioxide in an ABG. Now, oxygen dissolves m much slower, so it takes more time to cross this, um, cross this alveolar capil capillary membrane, and so its concentration gradient is much more significant. So it's going to drop to actually a normal um, oxygen concentration in the uh, alveolar, um, in the pulmonary capillary is around 80 to 100 millimeters of mercury. And again, this is a normal value that you will recognize from the ABG. And there is a significant drop because, um, because oxygen is not dissolving it as readily. Now, this is clinically really relevant. So if you have a person with hypoventilation, so say this person goes from breathing, you know, 12 times a minute to breathing four times a minute, which of these values is going to change first and most significantly? The answer is, for those of you who have worked with, you know, patients that have ventilation problems, the answer is the CO2 is going to climb much quicker and the oxygen is going to take it's going to take a while for the oxygen to drop and why is this this is because the um, co2 because it dissolves much quicker and diffuses much more readily the co2 and um, level in the alveoli and the blood are very closely matched but with oxygen because um, this dissolves and diffuses so slow so slowly, 
this number is going to work its way down very slowly. So after, you know, it's going to take several minutes for this number to drop to 80 and to drop this this number here to, you know, 70 and, and begin to drop the satur saturations. So therefore, hypoventilation tends to cause hypercapnia first. Okay, now also um, the fact that oxygen does not dissolve readily in liquid. This brings me to the next um, concept in which um, I want to talk about why uh, hemoglobin is necessary. And as you're aware, you know, our red blood cells um, are filled with a protein called hemoglobin. And hemoglobin is a, you know, globular protein that has sort of four quadrants in each quadrant has um, has heme pigments on it and can carry an oxygen. Okay, so and you know obviously our red blood cell is filled with these so we can carry lots of oxygen on our red blood cells. So what happens at the alveolar capillary membrane is the oxygen dissolves and diffuses into the capillaries and then um, are taken up by the hemoglobin. And as it's taken up by the hemoglobin, this makes, this decreases, sort of instantly decreases the partial pressure um, as oxygen molecules move in to the red blood cells. And this makes sort of more room. This decreases the partial pressure enough that more oxygen can diffuse in behind it. So this process, this carrier process, allows us to carry um, many times more oxygen in our bloodstream than we would be able to otherwise. So in fact, about only 1.5% of the oxygen in our bloodstream is dissolved, and 98.5% is carried on hemoglobin. Okay. Now, what about carbon dioxide? Well, carbon dioxide um, dissolves better in in the bloodstream. I'm going to have to use a different color. I'm going to switch to yellow for carbon dioxide. So, um, you know, we can dissolve a much higher concentration of carbon dioxide. In fact, about seven percent of carbon dioxide is dissolved. So that's about five times more than um, what is dissolved, of the oxygen that is dissolved. 23% um, is actually carried by a different carrier and hemoglobin. So, you know, we have these oxygen carriers here, but the carbon dioxide does not use those receptors. They have their own little receptors little green receptors here. And the um, carbon dioxide, actually the carbon dioxide here is carried on these green receptors. So about 23 percent of the um, carbon dioxide is carried with the hemoglobin. So it's called um, carboxyhemoglobin. And then the remaining 70 percent is actually changed by a enzyme called carbonic anhydrase um, into carbonic acid, which is a combination of CO2 plus water, um, and it's and that actually dissolves very readily in the bloodstream. So I'll call those blue molecules make blue molecules representing carb carbonic acid, and these dissolve very readily in the bloodstream.